Hey, what's good, people? Welcome to With That Being Said. I am your host, Animal Brown. This is the only hip-hop game show where you get points for your hot takes. I got two of my people in here. I got Chris Dog and I got Bougie Brother Sean. We've got five rounds. You know how we get down. There's a debate each round. Whoever wins gets a point. Who has the most points at the end of the show wins the game. It's that simple. Let's kick things off, all right? Let's talk Billboard. They're changing the rules when it comes to album sales when bundled with merch. There were some complaints earlier in the year, DJ Khaled, Tyler the Creator, even dating back to last year with Nicki Minaj and Travis Scott. My question to you, Bougie Brother Sean, uh, will this make a big impact on how artists release their uh, albums now with merch? No, it won't make a big impact. If you actually know how to do your game and know how to hustle goals, it's just, yeah, you may lose you may lose 350 or you may gain an extra 350 by charging $25 instead of $20 for the shirt. So for me, I'm definitely going with no impact at all because my hustle, you can't stop me. This this ain't no this ain't no Rich Paul rule for me, you know. This <laughs> they kind of tried to do a Travis Scott rule, but it's not going to work. I, I think that, that it's just a game. And then billboards is kind of fading away anyways. Like, people really ain't ain't too pressed on, on how billboards doing their numbers these days. All right, Chris Dog, do you think this will affect how artists market their, their music moving forward? It, it, it's definitely going to affect it. I, I don't know what booze you're talking about. I mean, this is this is a game changer. And, it, and if it feeds through to other, you know, um, um, people who decide on who, what matters in music, then it's going to definitely be a game changer, not just for rap, any genre that you talk about. Because when it comes to how you want to put yourself out there, it's all about like what you bring to the table. It's not about the music anymore. It's about how you sell yourself to the public. So if you're able to give something extra, if you're able to give away some CDs or move units by not actually selling units <laughs> shoot that that's what it takes that's what, how the game has changed that's where we at where we at right now and i think the world owes dj khaled and Nicki minaj an apology because they were the first to speak out against this and they were looked at as haters then billboard came and goes oh you know what all right you right so the, just for clarity the rules change where now you have to have the bundle you can have the bundle but you also need to have the individual piece and the individual product sold separately. And the bundle has to be uh, more expensive than the actual individual pieces. Um, Sean, do you think people will just go for the individual piece now as opposed to getting the bundle? Why would somebody pay $4 more when everybody has a streaming service? Because you have to memorize what you got on, the sh on there. It's not going to come out on streaming until a week before the show starts. So if I'm going to the concert and I get my shirt, yeah, I need the music when I get the shirt so I can memorize the music for the concert. So that's really what it is. For a fan, you're not just gonna buy a shirt without the music for a fan. It don't make sense to do that. So so you're saying that you need the bundle. The bundle is what brings the people in. That's what it sounds like to me, and and then that goes back to the point that I made. You need that edge to get across to the public. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, more people are interested in the merch now than buying a singular project due to streaming sites. This one goes to Chris Dog. This is a huge deal. We're gonna see numbers drop next next Travis Scott project, um, next Kanye project. People that utilize the merch and album bundles. It's a big deal. If I want to go buy that shirt, I'm just gonna cop the shirt. I don't want to get the digital download on. It's not gonna come early. I'm gonna get it the same time Apple Music gets it. So it's it's kind of no point. Um, now moving forward. Let's talk AMA, American Music Awards. They had a couple of controversial winners at this latest AMAs. The best hip hop album went to Post Malone and also best rap song went to uh, Little Nas X. My question to you, Chris Dog: should Post Malone and maybe Little Nas X be in hip hop related categories? This needs to get straightened out and it needs to happen in a hurry. I'm sick of having the conversation. You cannot put yourself in every category in the world and expect to just transcend over it and make all the money. Like if, if you got to give the rappers a chance to 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 thrive. You know, when you put people in there that's really pop, like are you really giving a real rapper a chance to, you know, go to the public or to the people who matter who put in the votes? They don't they there's too many, you know, the 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 it's just too around the 
it doesn't make sense to me. Like, if you want to be country music, you got to be country music. Mm. If you want, if you pop, you got to be pop. Pick one and stick with it, and that's how I feel about that. Sean, are are these guys in the right categories? Uh, absolutely not. But even when they even say that they're in a particular category. The propaganda for them, they they aren't allowed in the categories that they even say they're in. So <laughs> with, with Post Malone, Post Malone has said on several interviews, you know, I don't do rap music. I'm not hip hop. And still he's getting best rap album. So, you know, I, I the, the funny part is he's still accepting these awards, right. but <laughs> but he shouldn't be getting these awards. And yes, they there is a propaganda for this. It, the rappers won't succeed because there aren't. The system aren't trying to have them succeed in the white award show. Now, do you think it's just a popularity contest and more people that vote on the AMAs are familiar with a Post Malone because he has crossed over because he is technically pop. We all know that. Do you think that's what it is? It's a popularity contest, Sean? It's not necessarily a popularity po contest. It's more of a he look like me contest. You know, so, you know, Luka, Luka Doncic is one of the best players in the NBA. And the fact that he looks like... Everybody who who the biggest fans out there, he's going to be the mass. He's going to be the biggest player coming soon. But that's the same thing with Post Malone. Post Malone looks like everybody. He makes halfway decent music and he features a lot of rap artists on his song. This is this is classic. It transcends from music to movies to you. I mean, you name it. Look, the people who ultimately make these decisions don't really give a damn what everybody else think. And they have enough money and are behind the scenes enough to not really ever matter. Like, it doesn't matter to them that they choose Post Malone every time. And whoever gets mad about it just going to have to suck it up. It's, it's, it's kind of where it is at this point. Yeah, this one goes to Sean. He brought up a very important point that Post Malone has said on several occasions he does not make hip-hop music. Mm. And Sad. these award categories don't care. They don't, they're going to give it to him anyway because they sing his songs and they hear him on the radio more than the other artists in the category. It's ridiculous. Would you guys have given him props if he would have given his, given his award up to maybe someone else in the category? Would y'all be like, oh, okay, that's dope, or do you feel that's, been not, done his, that's not his responsibility? <laughs> Is it maybe he's tired of doing it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, give me, I ain't going to turn away money no more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Macklemore, he did do it also. But yeah, uh, like to your point, it's still his award. They're still going <laughs> to say Macklemore under the album of who got it winning. So. That's true. All right, man, moving along. Good look, bad look, no look time. Let's talk fabulous. The long awaited, off delayed summertime shootout three project finally dropped. This is his seventh album. Chris Dog, good look, bad look, no look for fab. This is a bad look, and it's a bad look in so many aspects of his entire career and life. I mean, this is one of the people that the barbershops used to scream about, maybe as a top five uh, contender here. Like, he was up there. He had bars, and he was on the cusp of maybe being great. But this showed that he stuck around a little too long and got a little too poppy and got a little too all the wrong shit that takes you out of that category as the best rapper alive or mm. best rapper ever. So um, it was a bad look. He, sh he should have put a little more into it, maybe a little more thought process. Maybe some people should have told him not to do it. It was done. It's okay, but it's not something I want to listen to. Sean, what do you think about this um, summertime shootout? I'm giving this a total bad look. Mm. Coming from a huge Fab fan. If you grew up in the era that we grew up in, you knew that Fab, Jada Kiss, DJ Clue, like that era was huge. And Fab was one of those that was, was, was there. You even go to just a series of this. It was so The CD was so bad for me personally that I had to go back to the last album and say, hold on. Okay, am I listening to this based off of what the series sound like, or is this a standalone? It was definitely a standalone. It was not the mixtape feel that Fab always gives, even on his albums. Right. A lot of albums he gives that mixtape feel, but this sounded like he got in trouble with his old lady at the house, and he needed to make up. You know how that goes. <laughs> you know, hey, baby, I'm getting something to eat. Do you want to... Hey, baby, I'm going to get some shoes for you. Hey, baby, your holiday is coming up. This whole album was based around that. 
Yeah, um, I, I got to give both of y'all a point because y'all are both absolutely <laughs> correct. This is a bad look for Fab. Went from top five to not mention that at all. Um, now, we know that Fab is one way on his albums and another way on his mixtapes. And I think a lot of people were hoping that this was mixtape Fab that we were about to get. Absolutely not. He was swinging for the fences, trying to get a, a radio hit. Uh, I believe there's six or seven songs in a row produced by Hitmaker. They've all got top-notch R&B features on them. They've all got auto-tune Fab on them. Thanks. That's a fab that no one asked for. Um, so, yeah, it, it's a bad look, and fab is too good of a rapper to have to rely on gimmicks like A-list R&B stars and auto-tune. It's just, just yeah, I'm, exactly. damn, come on, fab, I do know, better next I time. <laughs> Bounce back with a soul tape three or four or whatever one he's on with please. that, and, and please lace us with that. Uh, let's talk Grammys. J. Cole, he's got four Grammy nominations. All right, let me tell you what he's nominated for. Um, of course, he's had the... Uh, the Dreamville compilation, as well as the Young Thug feature and the 21 Savage feature. Uh, my question to you, Sean, at this 62nd Grammys, will we see J. Cole get his first? I believe he's forcing the Grammys hand. Last year, he was featured crazy. This year, not only was he featured crazy, he put Dreamville on the map. I remember earlier this year, we was talking about who is Dreamville? Who are these people? What are these people doing? Now, Dreamville Everybody on Dreamville is nominated for a Grammy, and he probably has like another 30-something folks that was featured on the uh, project that's nominated for the first time. So, yeah, I believe he's forcing the Grammy's hand, and he's going to have to win at least one of them. Chris Dog, what do you think? Is he going to strike out? He is, he's been up the bat too many times. It's time for him to get a hit in the clutch. Um, it's going to come. He's going to win. He deserves it, um, and all of the other people who were residual um, people from his greatness should be thankful. Um, I, I was talking to somebody recently about the impact that J. Cole is having on rap right now, and people necessarily didn't, didn't get on the same page as me, but, I mean, he's right there at a Biggie Pock um, uh, uh, I mean, he's right there on the Jay Z, and for the genre that we're in, and what he's in, how he's impacting the game right now, he's a great. And it's time to uh, award him with even, uh, you know, a Grammy if that means anything to anybody. <laughs> hey, boy, you almost had it until you compared him to Big and Pop. I mean, he's a great now, but it's, he's what people are gonna talk about for years to come. And let me put it like that. If you had to take a guess, between the 21 Savage feature and the Young Thug feature, which one, do you, uh, Sean, do you think he would win out of those two? 21 Savage. Yeah. 21 Savage is definitely a, a, a better put-together artist than Young Thug. Young Thug is more abstract art, and for the Grammys, I don't think they look for abstract art. Mm. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, this point goes to Sean. Um, comparing Cole to Pac and Big is just a little it's too It's the soon. years and the time too frame too that soon. I'm taking in consideration. Right. You got to open your mind. No way. Now, we're going to close out this episode with another Grammy uh, question. Again, the Grammys are around the corner. The nominations have been listed. I'm going to read you Rap Album of the Year nominations. I want to know who you guys think will win. Of course, we got the aforementioned Dreamville, Revenge of the Dreamers 3. We've got Meek Mill Championships, 21 Savage, I Am Over Who I Was, uh, Tyler the Creator, Igor, and YBN Corday the Lost Boy. Now, the interesting thing about this category is that whoever wins, this will be their first Grammy. Sean, I'm going to ask you, who do you have as a front runner? <laughs> Front runner for me or front runner for the Grammys? Mm, so oh. for front runner for the Grammys, I'm definitely gonna have to go with Igor Tyler the Creator. They, they're gonna have to give it to him based on just him being that big fan and him being, you know, that crossover artist that no one really knows that he's is he gay? Mm. Is he not gay? I, don't want to talk about I mean, oh, uh, maybe. For, for the Grammys, I'm definitely going to have to give it to Tyler Creator. He put a nice body, body of work together. If you're a real super fan of him, I don't think you liked it. But for everyone else, this was, this was a mainstream album for him. Mm, Chris Dog, who do you got taking home the W? <laughs> who do I have taken over? <laughs> <laughs> no. um, who I have taken over. And I will put my foot down when it comes to this album because I was open. I've always listened to Meek. Mm. always listen to me and this ain't gonna be what everybody gonna choose i know but i had to say it great album great album his presence he had a special that came out that showed his 
how impactful he's been in the neighborhoods or in society, period. Um, he's been coming with it. His music is fire. He had radio jams. He, he meets all of the specs in order to win this. But unfortunately, it's 2019. Tyler Crater might put on a dress to the Grammys. So, hey, you know, unfortunately. You both, first of all, both of you guys got it right. It's, this will absolutely go to Tyler, the creator, due to all of the things that you guys mentioned. This is super predictable. I would be shocked if it went in any one of these other directions. I don't even think, if I'm J. Cole, I probably won't even show up again because I think he knows where this is going. Tyler, the creator's album is the least hip hop of these selections. Very true. And it will, that's probably what's going to cause it to win. So, again, you guys are killing me. I got to give both of y'all the damn point. I don't appreciate this. However, that me leaves Sean with four. Uh -huh. He wins for the day. Close battle, but he pulled it out in the clutch. Sean, any my final words before we get ghost? Man, you know how we do, man. We're going to be here till we can't be here no more. And I want to give a super shout out to all the Juice World fans, man. I'm here with y'all, man. You know, condolences to Juice World and his family. We out here with you. We praying for you. Absolutely, man. Sending positive vibes to Juice World friends, family, um, and fans, of course. Until the next time, man. So with that being said, I'm your host, Animal Brown. Peace.